When I say hey, you say ho. Hey? Hey. When I say Ted, you say X. Ted. Ted. Mm, Nailing it. Ladies and gentlemen, in the world of theatre and live performance and improvisation, that's what's called accepting an offer. I made a really easy offer to you and you accepted it. And you're a little bit like healthy almonds, like you're activated because you're at Ted and you're leaning forward and you really want to hear this stuff. But in the world of ideas, we're maybe not so activated. So if I was to say, when I say Ted, you say X. Ted? Yes. Ted? Yes. When I say ideas, you say yes, ideas. Yes. Ideas. Yes. Brilliant. But in the real world, what happens is, when I say ideas, you say, oh, geez, I don't know, we don't have the resources or the budget, it doesn't align with our strategic advantages. Ideas. <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? Like in the real world, when someone comes to you with an idea, you make it about yourself immediately. It's our human nature. Someone says, oh, I've got a brilliant idea about something. And you know it's not thought out. It's that moment where they've been gardening or they've walked the dog or they're in the bathroom and they've just had this light bulb moment. And they've gone, I know how I can improve my environment immediately. I'm going to tell someone. And it's going to be someone close to them or someone they like or it's going to be their supervisor or even worse, their boss. I've got an idea. Without it being thought out. And in those moments, those flashbulb moments, they are really, really important. That's a person going, oh, I know how to improve my environment and I want to share it with you. And as the receiver, you're like, oh gosh, this feels like work. Or I'm going to have to let them down easily because the reality is in my life, there are no resources, or there's no budget for that. Or it doesn't align with our strategic plan. Or my personal that I really, really love to hate is, yeah, we've tried that before and it didn't work. And I feel like in this room, you get that. Whether you've been the person having the idea or you're the person receiving it. You've been on either end. And as a vulnerable person opening themselves up with their idea, you're hoping that the receiver is going to be like, yes, this is everything that I've ever hoped for, but it's usually not. <laughs> They're usually really thinking about how it affects them immediately. But what if we accepted their idea simply as an offer, simply as a way of going, yes, tell me more. Because even though there might be not be the resources, maybe there isn't the budget, that kernel of passion that that person has shown you, that should be harnessed for good people. We should be jumping on top of that. Now, to give you some context, uh, I work for an arts company. And we are a creative hub of ideas. In fact, one of our greatest challenges is that we are in constant ideas mode. In fact, right before coming here today, my colleague said to me, OK, I've got an idea. Also, don't give me that look. It takes a little bit of rewiring to be accepting of ideas regardless of the situation because you are also protecting your time. Ideas represent time they represent resources, and but folks, if the only thing we should be valuing is time, then why are you hoarding it? Why are you hoarding it? Why are you keeping it for yourself? Why aren't you giving people your time? Just even a little bit. So, in a world where we are in constant ideas mode, be it whether because we've had an idea and there are no resources and there's no budget and we're going to need to find stakeholders and sponsors and how are we going to pull this off? Let's come up with more ideas. Let's sit down and plan. But that's the ideas circle that we're in. It's a little bit different though because often people walk through our door 
and they've got an idea. So I'd like to give you two examples of how this is truly relevant. At the start of last year, a young lady sent me a message and it was late at night and said, I've got an idea. And my cup was running over. I didn't want to hear her idea because I was too busy. I wasn't ready. I wasn't receptive and she was going to get a no. I didn't even know how I was going to get a no, how I was going to say it, but I knew I was going to say it. Revo like rewind 12 months before that and one of someone would say to me, there's no budget for that, there's no resources for that, when I had an idea. So I tried to be conscious about how when someone presents an idea, how I would respond. And it takes some seriously physical and mental rewiring. It takes you to go, this moment is not about me. It's not about my resources or my budget. It's not about how this is going to influence my life, my career, my time. It's about them. So that late night, I sat on it for a little bit and I knew that she could see whether I was typing or not. And I just said, bring lunch to the office on Friday and I'll turn off my phone and we'll talk about it. So she did. She came in and she said, so I just want to write a play. And in, if you're in the world of creating performing arts, you know that there is no such thing as just writing a play. You know it takes time, it takes experience and it takes a great story. And there's that time thing again where I just wanted to hoard my time. But I just, okay, what do you, what, so just to, cl just to clarify, you just want to write a play. Yep. You don't want anything else. Nope. Hmm, how could this work for me? We were putting on a festival and I needed content. So I said to her, and this was earlier in the year, how about we set up a whole bunch of milestones and if you write this thing by June, we'll put it in the program. How about it? She's like, oh, okay. She wrote it by June. It was in the program, which was circulated by July. And in one of those evenings during our festival, 240 people came to two sellout shows. She had written the show, she had cast it, she had rehearsed it, she had staged it, and in the end, taken money at the door. That's dead set legendary. And she did the work herself. She didn't come to me and say, hey Di, I want to write a play, can you please give me the resources and can you give me money and can you make this happen? All she said was, I just want to write a play. And what I could give her was my time. And in the very early inception of ideas, that's what you should be offering, is time. It shouldn't be about what happens next and I can't possibly do that or we can't possibly do that or it's been done before. It should be just about listening and perhaps even challenging. Perhaps even challenging and going, do you know what's already in the market? That's an interesting idea, but do you know what's already out there? Like, let's make sure no one else is doing that. So you get to reframe the narrative instead of saying, it's already been done, you can challenge them and go, can you come back to me next week with similar market products and let's talk about them and let's see where your idea sits. If you just offered a little bit of your time, I don't know if you can pick up on this repetition that I'm offering here, folks, but I will harp on it because in that infant idea space, they just want you to hear them. They want to, for you to accept that offer. Now, fast forward um, 12 months. It's end of the year. Um, we've put on a festival and anyone who's worked in a festival will know there's nothing left in the tank. And two ladies, two sisters walk in our door and they say, I've got an idea. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> so good. 
because I've been working so hard to rewire my responses to say there's no resources or budget or whatever else. And so I've said, okay, okay, you've got an idea, but can I be honest with you for a moment? I'm empty. I don't have anything to offer you, but I see that your idea has merit. Would you come back in four weeks' time? Would you give me and my body the break that it needs and the overseas holiday? And I will come back and I will give you my attention and we will sit down. And I said, and also, with your idea, come back with what you want to achieve. And they said, okay, and we set a date and a time and I watched them walk out and I put the calendar in my diary and I turned to my colleague and said, Well, that's never going to happen. I did the thing that I wanted to do. I was honest with them. I said, I will hear you. I will hear your idea in four weeks' time next year. That's got to be one of the harshest rebuffs ever. Fast forward four weeks, those ladies walked in the door. And not only did they walk in the door, but at some point in those four weeks, they had found a little bit of mongrel in them. They had not only just sheepishly walked in with an idea, they walked in with conviction. They knew what they wanted to do, they they knew how they wanted to do it, and they knew what they wanted from me. And there wasn't a no in me. And dead set, no resources, no budget, no idea of even how to pull off that project. But it was an easy yes. It was an easy yes because they had put their own dog in the fight. They had gone, this matters and we want you to be a part of it. And that's really hard to say no to. So we did the paperwork, we applied for funding and four months later we were successful. Now that work will start in November and it is possibly one of the most scariest and challenging projects I have ever agreed to be a part of, and I suspect it will be one of the most rewarding experiences of my artistic career. And it's because I made them an offer and I was honest with them and said, would you come back? And they picked themselves up after the four week of come back in four weeks and went, yeah, we're in. You better be in because we're in. So if you're the person who has an idea, I would suggest you find the right person to share it with, number one. And if that person is your your boss or is your supervisor or your friend, ask them to give you a little space to talk about it. I've got an idea. Maybe it's a, a brain spasm, I don't know. Maybe it's because I was gardening. Maybe I walk my dog too much, I don't know. But I've got this idea, it could improve our circumstances, it could be an amazing project, I want you to be a part of it, I just want you to listen to it and let me say it out loud. Let them, give them space. Give them space to say it. If you are the ideas person, ask for the time. If you are the receiver, make the time. Because time is the greatest offer we can give in the idea space. That feeling that you get when you ask someone out on a date and they say no, that's that feeling where if you tell someone an idea and they say there's no budget for that or there's no resources, that's that gut feeling that goes, oh, I'm not worthy, I don't have enough value If that's in your workplace, that employee is less likely to be excited about going back to their desk or back to their workstation. They're going to be less excited about going to work the next day and forget Monday. They're not keen at all. But what if you were a leader that said, I'm interested in hearing you out. I'm not saying we're committing, but I want to hear you out. That person will have a little bit of validity They'll go, okay, I'm being listened to. This is cool. I can be challenged. I can be asked to do more work around my idea. That's fine too. But I'm being listened to. 
And that's great because they're more li than likely to go back to their desk and back to their workstation. They're more likely to be keen, keen to turn up the next day with their research and their products. And Monday, they will be there. What if your environments were surrounded by people who wanted to be there because in that very early stage of an idea, they were listened to? Ladies and gentlemen, I want to make one final offer to you today. And you can choose whether to accept it or not. That's up to you. Not so bad. Not so bad at all. Thank you so much for your time. It's been a delight.